Hey quick gamers, today we're going to make a 3D multiplayer soccer game in under 10 minutes using the quick game editor. There will be no environments to set up, no installs, no downloads, just game development. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is navigate to quick game. Here we can see some games made by other developers, but today we're going to click create at the top. We can look at the documentation, but since we already feel pretty comfortable, we're not going to spend any time here. However, this video does assume that you read the thousand foot view section already. Let's create a new game. The game editor starts off with a pretty blank voxel map editor. This is your game world. You can draw on it by dragging around the shapes in real time. Maps also have game objects, which will contain the logic for our game. Let's give this a run. Quick Game starts you off with a simple moving, jumping character controller with a lot of really good default values. Since we're making a soccer game, let's design our soccer field. In environment, we can choose to regenerate a flat layout. For our game, we're going to make it wide and narrow with a pretty nice green color. This design is good enough for now, let's add a soccer ball. We can find a number of community made assets in the asset store that we can use in our game. This is the same fully featured voxel editor as our map. Now we need to create our soccer ball game object. Game objects have drawings, physics, variables, and events. We will add our soccer ball drawing to our game object, update our physics bounding box to be a sphere, make it dynamic, and then make it pretty bouncy. Now we need to add our soccer ball to the map. We can move it around and make changes to it in real time. This will be the initial position of our ball. Let's give this a test. Now we can run around and kick our ball. The next thing our soccer game needs is a goal. We can go to assets and draw our new goal using the line tool and colors. But I know we have a great one in the asset store, so let's just use that. This imported the goal itself and the pattern for the net, which is just a simple checkerboard. Now let's add a new game object for our goal, set the drawing, update the physics bounding box, make it bouncy, and add it to our map. We'll make it a little bit bigger and snap it to the ground by holding control while dragging. Now we'll maneuver it into position and rotate it 90 degrees. We'll also reset the Z to zero to center it. Now we will hold shift and drag to clone the goal, then position it and rotate it. Let's see how it looks. Now we can kick our ball into the goal, but it's just going to bounce off. We'll need to add some collision logic. We're going to go to our goal object, go to collisions, and add a new collision with our soccer ball. The game logic here will execute every time the ball collides with the goal. For our purposes, we're going to get the direction our ball collides in, what's called the normal, check if the Z is equal to one, meaning it hit on its side, and if so, we will destroy and explode the ball and create a new ball in the middle of the map. Now that we have some simple game logic, we can make our map a little bit prettier. We're going to try to imitate the soccer field I found as best we can. We'll paint some lines with hollow cubes and circles on our map. Now we'll add some texture to our field by drawing a simple grass pattern. This should add some pretty texture. Now we can flood fill our grass pattern onto the field. This feels a little too repetitive, so let's update the scale. Much better. Let's give this a run. This looks a lot more interesting to play on. Now we'll add a border by adding a big hollow cube around the map and cutting off the top. You'll notice I'm navigating around using WASD to update the shape in real time. Perfect. Now that our game is pretty, let's add some power-ups. We'll add a shield power-up that will give the player an unfair advantage. We'll draw our power-up base, import a shield model from the asset store, create a pretty pattern for our shield, create our power-up object, and add our drawings. We're going to take advantage of the fact that game objects can have multiple drawings and overlay our shield pattern on top of our power-up. This will allow us to customize it and add more power-ups later. 
Now we're going to add our game object to the map and set the angular velocity to 0.1 so that it spins. This looks great. Now let's add some collision logic. We're going to add a custom event callback to our player and give it an argument of power up type. It is important to note here that you can use the drag and drop editor instead of JavaScript if you feel more comfortable. Our logic will say if the power up type is shield, then create a new shield game object, set the scale to be real big and attach it in front of our player. Then after three seconds, the shield will be removed. In the power up, we will add a collision with the player, call our custom event, and then destroy the power up. Now we will just create our shield object, add the drawing, update the physics, and give it a run. This feels great. We can also see the details of our game in real time using the debug feature. This is where we will see logs and even execute code in real time for testing. Details of every game object is also available for you. One power up is great, but it'd be fun to have more of them appear periodically. Let's create a timer in the global game object that will trigger every four seconds to create a new power up randomly on the map. There, we can see it showing up. Now that our game is fun, we're going to create some competition with the leaderboard. The easiest place to store this is in the global variables. We're going to create a new value called team leaderboard and set it to a new team leaderboard. We will set the initial score to be zero and sort it by descending. This is a special variable that will automatically keep track of a value based on how many teams you have in your game. You can also have a player leaderboard, which works much the same way. Now we can go to heads up displays and add a new data source for our leaderboard. You could think of a data source as a for loop that will clone all the elements under it for each entry in the array. We're going to set the data source for our heads up display to be qgobjects.global.variables.teamleaderboard.datasource. This is a special array that will be bound to our leaderboard. Notice that the editor provides us with IntelliSense at every keystroke and it's telling us that there are currently no errors. Next, we will organize our labels into a column by dragging the data source and label under it. We will set our column to be pivoted to the top right, hide the background, and add some margin. Next in the label, we will update the color and size and add a step event to update our text in real time. We will get our data source item and update our layout's text to be the team and score. Now we need to update our leaderboard variable, but first we need to know which goal was scored in. To do that, we will add a team variable to our goal and update the initial value on our map to be team ID 1 and team ID 2. Now we will update our collision code to increase the team leaderboard based on our goal's team ID. Let's see how this plays with two players. Great, our scores are updating correctly. Now let's make a few tweaks to increase the chaos of our game. We'll set the character controller max speed to 200 and we'll make the soccer ball a bit bigger. Oh, this feels great. Once we're happy with how things feel, we can test out our game with our friends. Quick Game will generate a private link that we can share with anyone to play on the internet in real time. We can use this to make sure our game is fun in multiplayer. The final step before publishing is to update the metadata for our game. We will call this Chaos Soccer, a fun simple soccer game filled with power-ups. We'll add a how to play to let the players know what they need to do, and add some tags so it's easier to find. We'll set the number of teams to two, and now we're good to go. We can publish our game for a review. As the developer, it's your responsibility to record the promo video for your game. Quick Game lets you record this right in the debugger, and will save and encode the playback for you. Make sure you have as much fun as possible, as this will entice players to play your game. And there you have it. In just under 9 minutes, we created a full web-based 3D multiplayer game without knowing anything about sockets, servers, shaders, quaternions, or any of the other complicated things that make game development a chore. Once our game is published, we can track analytics and even receive ad revenue every time it's played. I can't wait to see what you create. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.